Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well out there. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also check out the comment section below where I do add more information about whatever I am talking about. Also potentially any changes and there might even be links down there. So check it out. If you have any questions, post it down below in the comments as well. Let's get started. This speaker is the Bowers and Wilkins 603 Anniversary Edition. So first I wanna start off by showing you the rear. If I can so try standing up and moving it, maybe that'll help. They do offer a port plug and it came in the box so you could plug it up if you want to. Um, I mean, I personally don't see any reason why with this speaker you would port plug it, but you know, it might be a preference for some people. Also, this has two sets of binding posts and they feel pretty good, they feel pretty strong. Now this is if you wanna buy amp it, you can. Just always make sure that if you do buy amp it, you gotta take the jumpers off. Don't buy amp it with the jumpers connected because that would be very bad. So just to give you a little idea of the speaker height, I do have this chair set to the same height as my couch. So just to kind of give you a bit of a reference point with that, and really if you're, li if you're listening to music or movies, you're sitting down at home on your furniture, you know, it's good to see the height. Let's talk about the specifications. It's a three-way design, tweeter, mid-range, and two woofers. The back of the speaker is ported as you saw, so it's a base reflex design. This is a one inch decoupled double dome aluminum tweeter, okay? And this, this grill over here keeps it safe as well. It feels pretty strong. I mean, I didn't go over there and you know do anything crazy to it, but I mean, it does feel pretty strong. Um, these two woofers are two and a half inch paper cones and this is a six inch, what they call continuum, continuum cone, FST, fixed suspension, transducer, mid-range. So that's this, and it definitely doesn't have any give to it like the way these woofers do. So just keep that in mind. The frequency response is 48 hertz to 28 kilohertz, okay? Funny is that it's same frequency response as that nice speaker over there, the Focal. Keep an eye out for the comparison video that I have as well. The sensitivity is rated at 80, 88.5 decibels, and the impedance is 8 ohms. Okay. Uh, let's see, anything else that's important? Um, and the weight of the speaker is 53.1 pounds. So that'll give you an idea of how heavy it is. You know, even though it's, it's a smaller speaker, if you do have issues with your back, always make sure you get some help because, you know, these things are heavy and they're kind of awkward. Um, it does have a base as well. There's, there's a wide base that you could attach to it. And I would definitely suggest if you have any pets, um, anything, you know, like a cat, dog that might lean up against it, children, definitely attach that base because as you could see over here, I'm giving it a little poke with my finger. Let me stop it from wobbling. Just a little poke and, you know, I mean, if this, if this gets enough of a nudge, it's going over. So just keep that in mind. Definitely attach that base. The base will keep it nice and, um, nice and firm. I do want to point out the exterior as well. The exterior is kind of nice looking. Um, I wish they did something with these woofers. These woofers look just very plain. I mean, they kind of have a very, uh, you know, basic feel about them. And it's funny because these woofers are a paper cone. It reminds me of the first speaker that I ever purchased. And I believe when I purchased, um, when I purchased that speaker, I was probably, 13 years old, maybe 14 years old, and that speaker was the Advent Prodigy Tower. And I remember going into a, um, into a Sears and I'm listening to the speakers and I'm looking at the woofers and 
I'm thinking to myself, it's very interesting that it was paper. And at the time, they had a six and a half inch model, which was the bookshelf. I knew that wasn't good for me. Then they had the eight inch version and they had the um, 10 inch version. Anyway, to make a long story short, I ended up purchasing the eight inch version, which was the Prodigy Tower, but I wanted that 10 inch because I just knew that the 10 inch version would sound so much better. So it's kind of interesting to see that these woofers are a paper cone. Most woofers these days are more, you know, like something special. The exterior of this looks nice and, you know, kind of the way I always describe these things is kind of like that Ikea style about it. You know, I, I just kind of, I go in that store enough, so I guess that's why, and I've purchased some furniture over the years, but, you know, it does have that type of a look. I like that the front is white. I do kind of wish that these cones were, like, a bit of a different color or something like that. Maybe, you know, if the cones, like, maybe a little bit of white in here or something to just kind of break it up. But the two black cones, to me, just kind of, um, it kills it a bit. I mean, it's not... It's not terribly unattractive, but this is so silver and silver, and then it's just plain black. All right, enough about the exterior. Let's talk about the, the sound quality. Sound quality of this speaker is very interesting. There is some, um, some songs that I really enjoyed. And other songs I was just listening to, I was like, oh, no, no, I, I, I can't even, you know, tolerate it. it you know, it's kind of funny. Um, I mean, there was more things that, that I really enjoyed than things that I didn't enjoy. But some of the things that I didn't enjoy are kind of like essential, you know, like I, like I have to listen to these bands. I can't give it up because I don't like the way the speaker is playing the songs. Let's start with the treble. The treble on this is, it can be, it can be sharp, all right? I, I think that it can be sharp. Um, sometimes it sounds really good, but then other times, and in particular, which is the typically three different bands that I go to to listen to how you know, the speaker is going to translate the sound of their, you know, cymbals, their hi-hats, for that type of hi-hat sizzle sound that it has. And this speaker can, can really drag it out. Now, I realize that a lot of it is going to be because of the recording, okay? But there's a, a lot of music that I listen to, a lot of rock, a lot of metal, where I was listening to it and I was just, you know, hoping that the tweeter would stop dragging on that kind of like a, like a, like a sizzle sound. Um, I, I think that a lot of manufacturers are putting way too much emphasis into these tweeters and not enough into the rest of the speaker to balance it out. And I realize it's about cost and to try to make it look, I guess, thin and to fit it into this uh, price category. But for years, long before I started making these videos, of course, and you know, you know, as you could tell from the story about the Advent Tower, um, I've, been, I've been into this for like 30 something years now. Anyway, manufacturers are doing what I call, they're making these big tweeters, I mean, even though, even, though the, even though the tweeter's little, but the sound is so big, like here's these big tweeters with like these little tiny baby woofers. And I mean, these are, you know, six and a halves or whatever, so it's not like they're five and a quarters. Heaven forbid this tweeter with a five and a quarter inch, uh, you know, woofers, forget it. Um, but if this, if this speaker, if these woofers were eight, or if they were 10, then I think it would balance out a lot more. I, I don't know though how much it would help with the actual um, carrying out of that type of like, you know, like sizzling sound that I was, you know, referring to from the, uh, you know, the cymbals and the hi-hats. Um, so, you know, that's kind of a different thing. That's more so I think the, the overall sound that they were going for when they, you know, would design this. But again, you know, it's not everything because there's a lot of stuff that does sound fantastic. But some of the things that don't, um, it's really because it's like the tweeter isn't, 
it, it's not letting it's not letting that sizzle in. I felt like it's just kind of like a continuous like you know, it's doing that sort of thing. Um, that's the best impersonation that I could do, of course. <laughs> but um, you know, with that said, let's get on to the mid range. The mid range is very interesting, and I believe it's just you know the sound that they were going for. This mid range has a bit of a sound the way it looks, like like a metal type of metallic type of a maybe like a like a horn sound. Um, there's a lot of things that I was listening to where it, the sound was kind of like this. It sounded like the singer was singing with his or, or her, <laughs> you know, hands around her mouth. And I don't know if that sound picked up right or not with the microphone. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. But if you do this at home, you'll know exactly what I mean. So for some, you know, for some... Um, some of the songs that I listened to, I mean, it sounded really great. The emphasis that it put on it really worked. But I think for other songs, it just didn't work. And I think that the mid-range is, is, is very good overall. I think, it's, I think it's clear. But I think that the problem lies somewhere with these paper cone woofers. These paper cone woofers have a bit of a very very dull sound and again reminds me of the advent prodigy tower <laughs> when i was listening to it, it, it you know it's it just has a very um you know the base is the base is decent i mean it's weak it's weak bass but for the sound quality of the bass i don't listen to this and go this bass sounds good okay I don't listen to this and go, wow, this, this bass is great. No, no, this speaker needs a sub. The speaker needs a sub, but the overall um, you know, sound quality of this bass is kind of dull. Well, maybe even sometimes I felt like it was a little bit like muddy-ish, but I guess you know, to try to you know, make a speaker from this company at this price range, you know, of course, things, you know, sacrifices had to have been made. I just... I just think that if these speakers were coded with one of these new uh, technologies that they have, or maybe like one of like uh, the Kevlar um, woofers, it would just sound so much better. We have like a nice, crisper, tighter sounding bass than a duller sounding bass. With that said, you know, always listen to speakers in your home, right? You know, hundreds of people can love a speaker, but if it doesn't sound right to you with your equipment, your ears, your room acoustics, it doesn't play the music that you enjoy, or, it, or should I say it doesn't translate the music that you enjoy well. Maybe it's the speaker, maybe it's the amp, who knows? But everything has to be right for you. So just keep that in mind. So again, this, this speaker has like its own sound, okay? It has its own sound. Uh, it's different. It's definitely. It's almost like there's a little bit of like a like a like a processing effect, like a home theater receiver's processing is being used on it. It's just so it's, it sounds a little bit different compared to if you listen to a whole bunch of other speakers. That's really the you know the point I'm trying to make. Um, some of the snare drums sounded sounded enhanced, and the only way I could explain it would be like taking like a piece of tin foil or or kind of doing that to the tin foil and it just sounded enhanced now with some recordings yeah i mean it, it sounds great but you know that's something that i guess the individual would have to appreciate about it and i did appreciate that with some of the recordings it also has an interesting way about how it sends the sound out it's mu it's much more top heavy Okay, so I feel like from here to here is, is what I'm listening to more so. Okay? And I think that that has something to do with um, you know, the clarity that's coming out of these woofers. It's just, it's just so much more clear and so much... It sounds so different up here. It's almost like these woofers, to me, you know, don't match so well 
with the, um, with the mid-range and the tweeter. Now, I did feed it 120 watts on the, on the Ankyo um, RZ840 uh, you know, receiver, but I also listened to this in a store as well. So I was listening to it on the, what was it, uh, the uh, Marantz in the store, which is why I didn't go dragging it into my other room with the Marantz receiver. Um, I just didn't feel like it because I felt like I already listened to it. And I know if I bring it in there, you know, there's going to be all carpeting and it's going to kind of, you know, calm down the sound as well, which I think would help, you know, for the tweeter, you know. Um, and also to the bass, this needs a lot of uh, bass reinforcement because I did put in a test CD and in the, in the 60 hertz range is when the bass just starts to go... Okay, so, um, you know, you definitely want a sub, and I would say set the sub to 60 hertz, um, you know, maybe 70 hertz crossover, somewhere in there. I wouldn't go any lower because it's very important to have the 50 hertz range when it comes to music. You, you know, you want a pretty strong 50 hertz range for those kick drums. You know, kick drums, um, the 50 hertz range is very important. Where's my water? Oh, it's all the way across the room. I wish I could just use the force right now and just bring that cup of water right to me. Anyway. <clears throat> um, okay, so yeah, so I feel like, you know, the speaker's kind of top heavy with how it projects the sound. Um, something sounded very good. Um, the strings on the uh, guitars sounded good because, again, this has a bit of that metal type of sound sometimes, a little bit crisp, uh, metallic, like the way I was trying to say, like with the, you know, uh, tinfoil comparison. So acoustic guitars and stuff like that, I thought it sounded pretty good. Um, the bass, you know, the bass is what it is. There were some songs that, you know, it, it could have used it could have used a lot more detail as well. There was just some songs when I was listening to them and I was just was going, you know, no way. Um, you know, back to those three bands that I was talking about, um, Slipknot, Five Finger Death Punch, and Pantera. You know, those recordings are kind of kind of spotty and you know, it takes a certain type of speaker for those recordings to really sound good and that's really because of that 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 symbol that that symbol um hi-hat you know sizzle sound so you know with that said you know for me you know this speaker has too many things about it that you know i don't really appreciate again you know you might appreciate it so i would never say you know stay far away from it because, of course, there's going to be a lot of people that love it. But for me, there were certain things here and there that I just really just, you know, I didn't care for. There was more stuff that I didn't care for, I guess. And, you know, unfortunately, unfortunately, when it comes to, um, you know, home theater, you know, all it takes is a few things to say, you know, I prefer something else. Okay? So... You know, we all have our own opinion. You know, just, you know, keep that in mind when you're out shopping for a speaker. I do think that this speaker really needs to be put into a corner somewhere. You know, it has to be put into a corner because it's just too... Um, the base is just too weak. So I, I couldn't picture putting plugs into the port because, again, you know, the base just rolls off. So I would say... You know, try to put this in some kind of a corner if possible, uh, unless if you really don't care about bass and, you know, you know, you could play it out here in the center of the room and, and be happy with it. Well, that's about all I have to say about the Bowers & Wilkins 603 Anniversary Edition. If you own this speaker, I would love to hear about your combination of amplifier, receiver, um, you know, the room that you might have it in, the room acoustics. It's always, it's always nice to hear because... You know, sometimes certain combinations are what makes a speaker sound good. So a completely different amp, maybe an amp that's much more uh, powerful might do it. 
So, you know, who knows? Thanks for watching.